It is Sunday, Minties, and that means I get to do a retro view. And I, ch well, actually, this was chosen for me. I was going to say I chose this, but this is Avengers The Crossing, the omnibus from Marvel Comics. So tune in to find out the things that I actually enjoy about this book and why I think it gets a lot of hate. Now, let's take a closer look at this while I talk about this crossover event. By the way, there are two covers for this. This is the standard edition cover, and then there's the direct market cover. Kind of wish I had gone with the direct market cover, because I've always enjoyed that piece of art by Mike Delgato Jr. So this is Avengers The Crossing. This omnibus took me, and I'm sure a lot of you all by surprise, that were collecting omnis back in the day. So, one of the 90s most notorious narratives, absolutely agree with that. Retail price of $99.99. It took me by surprise so much because I was actually thinking that they were never going to collect this in an omnibus format and I was going to do a custom omnibus of it. That's how much I wanted to have this collection in one book. So here is what it looks like under the dust jacket. Now let's get this open to see what all the fuzz is about always been a big fan of that style of end pages there They're almost like a countertop marble so avengers the crossing now one of the things i am going to do with this video is i am going to talk about spoilers so um i guess a you can stop watching now read it for yourself make up your own mind or b um you don't care about the story you've heard it was horrible you want to know what it's about or c you've already read it so you already have your opinion formed and you want to see what I have to say that actually takes up for this story. So, Avengers The Crossing, 1995. Just about all of Marvel Comics were going through their own little events or crossover things. So, you had X-Men, they were doing the Age of Apocalypse. Spider-Man was kicking off the Clone Saga. Well, actually, they were in this probably Phase 2 of the Clone Saga by the time this book came out. And then you had the Avengers titles. And during this time, Bob Harris was shifting over to as editor of the X-Men comics. But he was still writing Avengers. You had Terry Kavana coming in and writing Avengers, Iron Man, and scripting a lot of other stuff. Now let's talk about this. This is the issue that kicked it off. But this is probably the brainchild of Bob Harris and Terry Kavana. And there is the... You have no idea how hard it was to find this issue back in the day. No idea. And actually, I want to come back to this image in a little bit. Now, in the pages of Avengers, you had this crossover called The Crossing. This is a crossover event between the pages of Iron Man, Avengers, War Machine, and Force Works. Force Works was originally called Avengers West Coast, West Coast Avengers, and then eventually that title got canceled after the death of Mockingbird. So see? Spoilers. And after that, they decided to form a new extreme type of Avengers team known as the Force Works. So I said that Bob Harris was writing Avengers with Terry Kavana writing Iron Man, but there's other two names that I know you're you're going to be familiar with that wrote Force Works and War Machine, and that is Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. That's right, the same people that put together Annihilation Conquest and Annihilation and the modern cosmic saga. There's artwork in here by Mike Deodato Jr. There's also a young, very young Jimmy Chung do, supplying the artwork for Force Works and then eventually moving over to Iron Man. But yes, this is Jimmy Chung. Phenomenal artist. It's the guy that did the Young Avengers storyline. Um, and I kind of miss him on monthly series. But this is where he got his first start. And as a matter of fact, I want to say this issue... No, it's 321 is the issue we're looking for. This issue right here. 321 is the very first Marvel work by Alex Maleev. That's right, Alex Maleev that went on to do Daredevil. And other works with Bendis. But let's go back and talk about The Crossing. So what is The Crossing about? Well... It starts off like an everyday event where the Avengers are reunited. They have this new mansion right after the Gatherers saga. And they're playing poker with Hank, who is now with the X-Men, Hank McCoy. Um, a lot of the older Avengers are coming to visit. Now, this mansion that came from the Gatherers saga, it's one of the things this book does, 
also has this door that nobody has ever seen or heard of. Now, during the one shot, there's an invasion that happens, right? And the Avengers are attacked by these beings they've never seen or heard of. And also, it's a little confusing, but we have Yellow Jacket 2. And Yellow Jacket 2 is traveling through time to see the Avengers, uh, to warn them of something that's happening. And that is this character right here. So she goes through different points in the Avengers' life, like such as Hawkeye and Black Widow. They have new uniforms. That's what I wanted to point out. Thor has a new uniform. She's going through different parts of the Avengers, and she eventually reaches the Avengers' mansion in present time and gets killed off by this shadow figure. Like I said, I'm going to talk about spoilers because it's part of the story. She is not the only character that dies. We also have Maria, who is the inhuman nanny of Luna. Luna is the daughter of Pietro Maximoff and Crystal. Pietro's Quicksilver, Crystal is one of the Inhumans, and during this time is an Avenger. So she gets murdered in the mansion on the same day that Yellow Jacket 2 dies by, again, this shadowy being. That turns out to be Iron Man, Tony Stark. <laughs> one of the most uh, t biggest twists, I think, for Avengers in the longest time. So that kicks off a series of events that what we like to call the fall of Tony Stark. And now I'm not going to get too much into details as to what happens, uh, but Tony Stark then bankrupts the Avengers, bankrupts Wanda, uh, the Wasp, and they all start calling him out. They're like, how could you do this? He then murders other people. And all of this is caused by characters that are coming back that haven't been seen for a long time so this ties a little bit into the celestial madonna saga so when i say celestial madonna you know i'm talking about mantis so mantis is one of the characters that is pulling the strings on iron man but she's not alone she is living in this future sending some of her army to the past to take over the past so trying to get rid of the avengers janet I said Wanda earlier, I meant Janet. Uh, the Wasp gets hurt. Iron Man is just losing it. He is just killing people. And it gets. And he mentions here when he kills Amanda, one of the characters in Force Works, that it gets easier and easier every time he does it. So, yes, by this point he's losing it. He blasts Janet in the chest and she's dying. But that's okay. She, we'll talk about that here in a second. She puts herself into a cocoon. So, as I was saying... Mantis isn't alone. She is joined by Kang, the Conqueror. So Mantis and Kang are now a couple living in the future, and they're sending their army to the past. And for years, apparently, according to this storyline, they've been manipulating Tony Stark to do evil things and kind of controlling what he does. And he wasn't the first Avenger they approached. Apparently, they also approached Hank Pym, which is why Hank acted so weird and sometimes out of character don't know that i i get it they were trying to do some retcon Ugh, war machine so war machine has a new armor and he's fighting tony his best friend so this is still james rhodes without the classic iron man war machine armor now he has his own space armor that is an alien being kind of like the symbiote uh, from spider-man symbiote i guess if you watch the movies so yes tony stark is losing it he is becoming more and more evil manipulated by kang one of the things i didn't mention because it gets a little bit confusing with time travel is that during this get together we're introduced to this character of tuck who knows luna and you can assume again spoilers that this is her brother from the future and the girl with blonde hair traveling to the past these two characters right here tobias and malachi are also brothers from the future that you at first think it's Mantis and Kang's kid, but when they call Tuck and Luna cousins, you get the idea that it's probably Scarlet Witches and Vision's children from the future. All evil. There's also this character named Newt, who came from the future, who's this steroid little guy right here. And now we have Janet reborn as a buggy wasp. Okay, we'll come back to that because I just need to talk about the ending because it all leads to this right here. Avengers Time Slide, which is like their Omega title. You know how Age of Apocalypse had the Alpha and Omega issue? This is the Omega to the Crossing. So the Avengers, in order to save the day, to rescue Tony Stark, they travel to the past to get a young Tony Stark with the help of Daredevil. 
and bring him to the future. Okay, that actually is a ridiculous and dumb idea that should never have broken any... Like, what? Why would Captain America agree to that? Sure. And it all leads to Iron Man and Iron Man fighting each other in this classic issue. By the way, it has an amazing cover by Jim Califiore. I think that's how you say his name. Artwork inside by Jimmy Chung in uh, Califiore. So they have this fight and Iron Man pulls rips out his chest plate the young iron man the young tony stark's chest plate from the past meaning he can't function without this thing in his chest like our iron man and it all leads to this here the death of an avenger this is ed bennis by the way who went on to do justice league and birds of prey but mike deodato jr still providing the internal artwork by now terry cavana has i think he got some kind of promotion at Marvel, so Ben Rabb is helping with the script. Oh, I didn't even mention the Kotati, but hey, you know what? You can find some of the surprises here yourself. And Iron Man decides at the last minute to betray Kang and be good again, but it was too late. He dies. Our Iron Man, our 616 Iron Man, old Iron Man, Tony Stark dies. But that's okay! Because we still have a young Tony Stark that we ripped out of the 60s living in the present. So we still have an Iron Man and all is right with the world. After this, War Machine and Force Works gets cancelled. And eventually Onslaught happens and everything is retconned within the pages of Heroes Reborn. And more importantly, the pages of Kurt Busiek's Avengers Forever. All of this is retconned. So, why do I like this story? I think it's because we all have our guilty pleasures, right? There are people that go into movies knowing that they're horrible movies, like myself. I love Lady Hawk and Garbage Bell Kids, but I also know that they're horrible movies. I know that I have no right to actually enjoy them. There's nothing really about them that is good that I can be like, hey, kids, you all want to watch? Which I am going to force my kids to watch, by the way. But with this, I think there are some important things that happen here that are actual saving graces. You know, I mentioned earlier that Hank was first manipulated by Kang and by Mantis, and that actually works as a good retcon as to why he acted out of character so many times. I appreciate the character designs. I wanted to go back to this, this splash page right here, because the character designs were done by Joe Madureira and Mike Deodato Jr. So you have Black Widow that was designed by Joe Mad and hawkeye you have mike deodato jr's thor and i actually don't oh he, um joe matt also did the new design for iron man and scarlet witch and i wish actually that they had kept those in the back here the artwork i will say um i enjoyed this part this time of deodato's art style you know he everybody was kind of trying to either mimic jim lee or joe matt back then and I love the fact that we have a young Jimmy Chung drawing Iron Man. I like this cleaner and crisp style. And honestly, I think he was one of the first artists here in America that had like anime little Easter eggs. You have Totoro right there and little, um, yeah, other little Totoro characters. Pretty cool. So that's some of the art, right? And honestly, I think they were just trying to revamp the character of Iron Man. And for me, at least, I wasn't the biggest fan of Tony Stark. I wasn't the biggest fan of Iron Man. So all of this honestly kind of worked for me. I was like, okay, sure. Kang, for some reason, married Mantis. Because like I said, this goes back to the Celestial Madonna storyline. There's other little things in there, like the Katati, that they throw in from that storyline. So it actually could have worked so i didn't have a problem with them revamping the character of iron man there were a lot of silly things and i'll talk about some of the bad things in here that i completely agree such as the redesign of janet as the bug wasp that's kind of ridiculous ripping the young tony stark out of the past to make him live in the future was um really dumb for these characters considering they have already established the rules of time traveling in the past in their own issues of avengers that we can't do and break certain laws the drive for kang to conquer the past through manipulating an avenger actually works why he was doing it i don't know because i must have read this you know quite a bit a number of times and i never figured out exactly why kang other than 
the fact that he's evil, wanted to conquer the past, right? Other than, I guess, they were just writing a one-dimensional kind of character. Uh, here we have Luke Ross, by the way, providing early artwork. Luke Ross went on to do Captain America and do a lot of work with Ed Brubaker. His style is a lot different. And also, Roger Cruz, who had a very... Well, he could always mimic somebody's style, either Jim Lee's or Joe Mad's style. And I also realize that another bad point is the artwork. So I mentioned those artists earlier that I enjoyed, but half of the book is filled with these artists that uh, are just not easy on the eye, at least to me. And I don't, I yeah, they even back then as a kid, I realized, man, what, were they rushing through here? Like, did they need to get these issues out? Because some of this art is just rough. Be warned, like half of the book will have not the greatest art from the 90s. By the way, I know this is going to be asked, how is this going to be collected in an epic collection? Since, you know, this book itself has 792 pages. I really don't know the answer to that. I don't know if they'll split it into two or if they'll just collect the Avengers issues with the crossing, leaving out everything else. Um, for the epic format, I'm really not sure. So I guess to sum it all up, it's all an extreme story with extreme artwork during some extreme times in the 90s. And if you've never read it, you know, I'd suggest you do just to make up your own mind to see what you think about it. Because there's a lot of stories out there that are notorious for being bad. And I know that a lot of people hate them without even reading them. And I think that's the thing with comic books, right? It's like they are there and you can make up your own mind whether you enjoy it or not. Instead of listening to some guy on YouTube talk about why the Avengers The Crossing is one of the greatest stories ever. Which, I'm not saying that at all. Because I just compared it to Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. So, I never understood why this story gets a lot of hate. Right? You have a character that has been manipulated and turned evil. Killing his own Avenger friends. Right? Out of nowhere. But... Everybody was okay with Avengers Disassembled. Or for that matter, Secret Invasion. Sure, we can believe those retcons, but for some reason people had issues with this. And speaking of retcons, like I mentioned, everything in here was retconned by Kurt Busiek during the pages of Avengers Forever. And if you've never read his run, that is the run to read in Avengers. Now, I said at the very beginning of this video, I was going to do a custom bind of this um, storyline because I never thought Marvel would publish this omnibus because as much as I like it I also realize there's a lot of other better Avengers stories to collect such as the Roger Stern run or hell even an Operation Galactic Storm oversized hardcover omnibus before they were going to do this so it really surprised me that they did this now 792 pages the only extras you get are the DM cover this one here and then this is by the way the original cover what it was supposed to look like so you have all those extra characters in the back that are not in the actual printed cover maybe they thought it was too busy and then of course the binding of the book this was a fun retro view and i'm think i've gone on way too long taking up for this book but i also pointed out the flaws of the book now if you want to get good avenger stories please check out our sponsor CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content of the book, the build of the book, and the page count. Let me know in those comments down below what you think about this story, if you've read it, or if you've just stayed away from it because you've heard horror stories. Is this as bad as some people say? To me, no, not at all. Now, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button if you have not subscribed, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Patreon and Redbubble. It's a great ways to support the channel if you can do so, and thank you to our existing patrons. And more importantly, please everybody stay healthy and safe out there, and much love to you all.